mind unveiled reacted to critical reacting to the mud flood oh my god oh i kind of want to Ooh, ooh, should we watch it? Oh, oh that's so good. Oh, I want to see, I want to see them get snarky. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm. All right, let's do it, let's do it. Hey, oh, what's no. up, everybody? We weren't really planning on posting a video today since we're working on a few big projects, but something pretty crazy happened, and it made us really think. Basically, Moist Critical, Charlie, otherwise known on YT as Penguin Z Zero, just found out about Tartaria and our channel was mentioned by someone while he was on stream. Check out the conspiracy about Tartarian. <laughs> Is this another reptilian thing? We'll do Tartarian Truth. Oh, it's an entire channel. Wait, what is it? I just want the basics. Tartarian truth, the lost city, the lost civilization of Tartaria. This is the truth about Tartaria. God, I wish he was gonna say Atlantis, but he's gonna say Tartaria. So here's the thing that you need to understand when you come across old maps. The terminology we use to- Oh, don't debunk it. Jesus, you're defeating the whole purpose. I want to learn about it. <laughs> who, did, who did you say covered it? Oh, absolutely not, Andy. It's done by a professional. How is this by so mind low and... quality? Oh my god. Can we get the higher quality one? Unveiled. Thank god. 52 minutes, Jesus Christ. I just want the cliff notes. <laughs> Holy shit, the Tartarians have six arms. <laughs> this is gonna be proxy. so good. The Irish Connection. Oh Where no! Just get like a... I forgot about that! I forgot! Oh yeah, you guys have to know, the Tartarian thing, it ties into the Hibernian conspiracy, unironically. You guys remember that ancient meme of the Hibernian conspiracy? Unironically, the Tartarian thing has ties to the, to the, to the fucking Hibernian conspiracy. I'm not kidding you. Quick, concise breakdown of the Tartarians. The U.S. Constitution is from Tartaria. With a name like that, how can I not at least check this out? The, Hiper the Hibernian conspiracy theory is a conspiracy theory that states that it's actually Irish people that are secretly in control of the world. Uh, it is a... Uh, it is it is unknown whether it was a troll that created the Hibernian conspiracy or whether or not uh, or whether it's actual and that's one of the things that you will discover in in conspiracy theory circles is that sometimes someone will make something up as a troll and then it will be taken as fact and it will become its own thing like hold on let me see if I can find it hold on let me see if I can find the uh this is the one. Hold on, let me see. Oh my fucking god. This is it! Oh my motherfucking- No! They'll all tell you it's the Jew, but have you heard of the Hibernian Conspiracy? It sounds crazy, but get ready to take the green pill. The list of presidents, U.S. presidents with Irish blood. Andrew Jackson, William Henry Harrison, James K. Polk, James Buchanan, Abraham Lincoln, Ulysses S. Grant, Chester Allen Arthur, Grover Cleveland, Benjamin Harrison, William McKinley, Woodrow Wilson, John F. Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard M. Nixon, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, George H.W. Bush, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, Barack Obama, and guess what? Guess what, everybody? I have worse news. There's another president. In fact, you could argue that this president is the culmination of the conspiracy theory. Biden Irish. He's Irish.
Mr. Biden, a quick word for the BBC. The BBC, I'm Irish. Come out, you black and tans. Come out and fight me like a man. Show your white value and medals down in Flanders. Show her how the IRA made you run like hell away. From the green and lovely lanes of Kilashandra. You think, you think this is made up? Who controls the world now? It's none other than the Irishman, Joe. He's an Irish Catholic, no less. Anyway, as you can see, uh, there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot, okay? There's a lot, okay? The, 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 the Hibernian conspiracy. Now, again, once again, you have to remember, the Hibernian conspiracy, nobody, I mean, it seems like it started as a troll. Like, most of the memes unironically seem like they're trolling, like they're trying to make fun of other conspiracy theorists, but there are people who unironically believe in it now, and this is one of the problems with conspiracy theories is because there is no basis in fact because there is there it is all just intuition and uh and gut hunches and feelings there is no way to like separate truth from fiction at once you bite the conspiracy pill yeah many people argue that QAnon was a 4chan psyop of course like it is very possible it is completely possible that that QAnon started as a complete bullshit like j literally a joke but it doesn't matter it can spiral out of control it's it's this is why conspiracy brain bullshit is so dangerous you guys know like uh part of what I fucking do is uh is is on this channel is point is like fight back against conspiracy brain bullshit you guys know my most recent massive cancellation uh was over me pointing out that there was some severe uh conspiracy brain going on with the balenciaga thing um which it was it was pure conspiracy brain it was people taking nothing and creating it into something just almost out of out of nothing um i push back against that stuff all the time because it's actually unironically dangerous and it rots your brain so we have fun laughing about this but i'm always going to have to remind you that there are people who unironically delude themselves to a to a point where they can no longer distinguish fact and fiction where they see like the smurfs and they believe that the smurfs are like a um a secret message from hollywood trying to throw you off the truth about the hibernian conspiracy obligatory hibernian question meme <laughs> from 1846 the impact of the of the blight was exacerbated by the Whig government's economic policy of laissez-faire capitalism longer term causes include the system of absentee landlordism and single crop dispend, de dependence no agenda at all Che Guevara Marxist leader Irish Frederick Engels co-author of the communist manifesto Irish James Connolly socialist leader Irish Duh. It really makes you think doesn't it All right, we better get back to this Okay, so for this first part of the explanation, I'm just gonna dive right in. And some of you who may be new to the channel, specifically after watching Charlie's video, may not be used to this certain style, and may demand immediate evidence after hearing such far out concepts. Ah, you may demand evidence, but you need to look at my emotionally charged, uh, contextless images. Like... For example, this random picture, which has a, a title called Pan-American Exposition Destruction. I don't even know, we don't know where this is, what this is, or if this is even real. ...and may demand immediate evidence after hearing such far-out concepts. 
but if you're patient, after explaining the main premise of Tartaria and what we're even discussing, we can go into more detail and provide supporting arguments after the initial brief explanation. Tartaria is the biggest conspiracy, meaning it's not an officially approved narrative, yet in terms of the implications and magnitude of the topics covered and the cognitive dissonance associated What am I supposed to... What are you supposed to get from any of this? What am I... <laughs> ...with it is so great, it could be rightfully considered the largest conspiracy. Essentially, it all begins with all our taught history being for the most part... Oh yeah, see this is... I, I happen to know what this is referring to, because this image right here is supposed to say that actually, secretly, underneath the surface, there's a bunch of structures that were buried by mud uh, because of the mud flood. Um, oh yeah, something interesting. Okay, um, so there's this concept uh, uh, in like con artistry, okay? Uh, uh, there's a concept in con artistry where um, sometimes uh, uh de like deliberate mistakes or outrageous claims that are so outrageous are intentionally left in uh the final c con artist project the c the product sometimes you will get scam emails uh scam emails that have like obvious misspellings and stuff like that and you just go oh my god how would this work on anybody and the truth is that uh in, in con artistry, there's this this concept of a filter where basically uh, they don't, they when they shoot out those con emails that are ripping you off that have obvious misspellings, they are actually hoping uh, that most people will see the, the errors and just immediately throw the email away because what they want is they want somebody who won't notice the misspellings. They are deliberately targeting people who won't notice the misspellings uh, because that type of person, a person who can look past the misselling, the misspellings, is actually a more valuable mark. Uh, uh, and this happens with conspiracy theories, usually on a little bit more subtle level. There are uh, conspiracy people, usually the ones who are luring people into a grift. That's basically every conspiracy theory person. That's something I mentioned in my previous streams, and I'll mention again, which is that uh, most like hardline conspiracy theory people are both true believers and grifters. It's one and the same. Uh, it, it reinforces them. They need to keep making a living. They've devoted their lives to it so they can never stop and they are further incentivized from recognizing the truth. But they will put for, intentionally put forward the most outrageous claims because uh, thinking people will shut their brain, will just go like, what the fuck, F fuck this, I'm done. They'll just check out immediately and be like, no, obviously uh, aliens didn't secretly bury towers in the ground to hide the gnomes. But the people who they're looking for, the people they're looking to exploit and make money off, they don't, they're not gonna think about that. They're just gonna go, oh, oh my God, really? And then they can, if they find those people, if they find the people out there who can literally believe in a, in a, in a gnome war, then they can make you do anything. So they actually deliberately seek that out. Anyway, let's continue. It's very exploitative. And it is, and when I say it's exploitative, uh, even the true believers do this. Because remember, even the true believers in the conspiracy still need to pay their rent. And the way they do that is by getting even stupider people to pay, to pay them. It's, it's fucking fucked up. Let's continue. Part, a lie. So much so that it's mind numbing to even fathom. Sure, there are likely some truths sprinkled in there. I'm not saying that. Everything that has happened has been faked, but more likely that it was set up to play out in a specific way. What is this? What is this? What am I supposed to- what's this? What Tartaria boils down to is fabricated histories in stolen cities. For example, what if I was to tell you that New York, Chicago, or any other major United States American city for that matter, was not built in the manner that they tell us? was actually already here in America before the European settlers? Imagine that our cities are just recycled. That'd be too crazy, right? What proof is there to support such a claim? In order to demonstrate this, we would just have to dive into each city's history. And that's kind of the purpose of our City Unveiled videos, 
literally a five hour documentary on a city, but for this instance, we can do Tampa. And shout out to Old World Florida. There are the Ebor tunnels, where the mainstream story is that these are prohibition tunnels, and you'll see the same exact story in many other cities. One of the main proofs for Tartaria, and don't worry, we'll explain that word in a bit, but a good argument is these underground tunnels which can be found in almost every downtown American city. Some are small and may have been built in a more recent time. Secret tunnel! Secret tunnel! Through the mountains! Secret, 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 secret tunnel! But others are massive and do not line up with the ability and available technology at the time. For example, the Washington Street Tunnel under the Chicago River. There are also legends in Pensacola. <laughs> what? what am I supposed to? I'm sorry. And do not line up with the ability and available technology at the time. For example, the Washington Street Tunnel under the Chicago River. What's this? What am I? What am I supposed to be seeing here? Uh, well, what's being circled? Is this like? Is that a goblin? Is that a? Is this? Is this where the goblin is? Oh, it's a Tartarian aircraft. Oh. There are also legends in Pensacola of underground tunnels, yet they have been suppressed from the history books and have been left to oral history because they don't line up with the official PR approved narrative. <laughs> they're suppressing the story of the tunnels. Why don't you just go look and see if they're actually there? Look at this. The Henry B. Plant Museum, otherwise known as the Tampa Bay Hotel, now to explain this to you, one of the aspects of Tartaria is stolen buildings and lost history. What you'll find is that every city has old world buildings. All you have to do is really question their history. Because if I- This- oh yeah, okay guys, guys. So this is one of the things that you have to understand about this channel in particular. This guy doesn't believe that anyone can build something in the style of an older era. So even though that there is a enormous, enormous, obviously, very obviously documented history of people deliberately imitating old styles because that's how time and style works, um, he doesn't believe that's possible. So like, for example, if I was to dress up in like an old timey Victorian outfit and I was to De you know, decorate my room with some antique, uh, some antiques. It would have to be, it couldn't be that I, that I was in the present, um, deliberately making my room look like it was from the Victorian era. It would have to be that actually I was from the Victorian era and I traveled forward in time at a rapid pace and was broadcasting from the Victorian era. It's just genuine, genuine ridiculousness. Yeah, <laughs> Hoot Wheels says, if I wear a Nirvana t-shirt, I would explode and leave a secret Tartarian tunnel behind. It's just like, no, all over America, we, uh, the entire capital of America is built imitating Greco-Roman styles. It's, it's just what pe- obvious, I don't know, like, you go crazy sometimes trying to respond to this I shit. I want to tell you that I'm doubtful that they built this in the way that they tell us meaning that this could be a repurposed building or an old world structure. But why? Most people would look it up and you would be directed to a museum that is in control of the history of that building. Hey, you'll be sir, given it's great to see you. Hope you're doing well. Great to see you, sir. I hope you're doing great. Welcome to all the Surus, Surus viewers. We're having fun diving into absolutely bonkers delusional conspiracy theory. A story. Most of the time, You'll get a few construction photos, but it's fascinating to find out how welcome, poorly everybody. documented the construction- Mama, you're our babysitter now. Well, welcome. Come on in and get comfy. We're having a lot of fun. We're even going to do some cooking, Mama, after this. So it's going to be very fun. The process was during this time in the early 19th century. It's the same thing. You'll see these buildings that are already mostly- this is all they really give us. Low quality vanilla sky images with the building already done. This was done in the 1890s. They had the capability to take HD photos. Oh yeah, see, this is one of the things. Another thing that you'll notice a lot with conspiracy theories is that uh, 
con uh, uh, claims, baseless, evidenceless claims often interlock with other baseless evidenced claims. So this photo is proof that they're lying because this guy also believes that they're lying about Tartarians having HD cameras in 1890. You see, neither of the, they, they serve as, it's like, it's like circular. It's like a circular reasoning. Well, we know that they're lying about the pictures because we know that they're lying about the technology. And there's never any evidence provided. It just goes, oh my God, yeah, whoa, totally. Done with scaffolding. Barely any people, windows in the ground, and clear signs of photo manipulation, which that's an entire subject of its own. Also in Tampa, there's the Ponce de Leon Hotel, which was completely poured concrete, which was supposedly the first of its kind. Also, these hotels in Florida were fully stocked with electricity during a time when Florida really didn't have that much going on, or so we're told. Also <laughs> so they built a giant the, okay Florida didn't have much going on and yet they were building a giant hotel there so maybe could it possibly be that Florida had more going on than you expected and the reason they were building a large hotel there was to attract tourists and they wanted to have electricity for the tourists so you can see the familiar Russian style architecture Ever wonder why it's called St. Petersburg, Florida? Well, it's why? Why is it called St. Petersburg, Florida? Not just Florida. You can see this in New York, San Francisco, Charleston, uh, St. Louis, uh, and many more. Many times, old world churches downtown have uh, questionable history. Um, what? What? I think he forgot to make. I think he forgot to make a claim there. He's forgotten to make an argument. ...trees as being built or moved several times. You can see these old world buildings everywhere. From Gilded Age mansions and government buildings to small shops downtown. Even colleges, prisons, hospitals, military bases are all structures that do not line up with the official narrative that we are told. Conspiracy theorists have this amazing magical ability to make, to make, to present evidence that counteracts their narrative and claim it supports them. Any rational thinking person should be able to look at imitated styles all over the United States and go, damn, do you think that maybe there was a bunch of people who were inspired by, I don't know, Russian uh, Orthodox uh, structures of the past? Maybe they were Russian Orthodox themselves and they decided to build things in that style because they were inspired by it. And then, and no, 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 no. It certainly must be that actually the, the, the Russian Orthodox church was also built by aliens and the aliens flew over to America and built them there. Celery person says, as someone who currently lives in Florida and has, or, or who lives in Florida, the PDL, the Ponce de Leon Hotel was built around the time of Henry Flagler, a super rich guy who was trying to turn, who was a part of the big push to turn the state into a tourist destination. One of these was a mosque. This person is conflating five different styles. Oh yes, 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 brain soup. They will see any, Okay, conspiracy theorists do not actually care what real connections are. They have decided on their narrative and they will make they will make anything connect into that narrative. They don't actually look for it. You could sit there and you could actually go and spend time discovering the history of how architectural styles spread from one area to another, but then you wouldn't get to say that it's aliens. You wouldn't get to say that it was the secret gnome empire uh, in the pre-Tartarian era. It's so much more fun if you just say that there were gnomes and then you find it, you know, build backwards a narrative that fits you. Of course, we're talking about structures from the 17th century to the 19th century in America. Tartarus system says, wait, we're conspiracy busting? We're, we're, 
<laughs> you could call it conspiracy busting. Yes, I do try to uh, I do try to point out gaping flaws, but mostly we just laugh at the conspiracies. We try to keep. I mean, I do try to teach people to spot conspiracy uh, brain. It's something I do all the time. But uh, these these conspiracies are so wild that the idea of actually busting them is almost impossible. Like in the first six minutes of this video, this guy has claimed so much there's no way to really to like bust it all you can do is point out the like the like the manipulative framing but yeah <laughs> there's also no proof that they were built in the fashion that they tell us other than state approved documents manipulated photos and just complete lies there's also the common theme that throughout the downtowns of america you can see what is often called mud flooded windows of course, the typical answer is that these are just basements, but that doesn't really make that much sense. Why? Some of these downtown areas get extreme flooding. Okay. Why would you build like this, especially with cities near the- If some of these areas get flooding, maybe, bef maybe the, some of these structures were built before the flood happened and it's just a normal ass flood instead of a fucking global mud flood. Bay. Many of these basements hey, actually welcome, have Weary. underground Happy windows and doors that lead to nowhere. So this would imply that the streets actually used to be a lower level and then they were raised. Okay. We know this was done for a fact in Atlanta with the viaducts. Exactly! That's how you know there were gnomes, right guys? Uh, uh, there are some areas where it looks like the street was raised at some point in the history, which means that it had to have been gnomes, it had to have been giants, it had to have been aliens. There's no other answer for that. They completely covered up old Atlanta. This is another interesting theme. Basically, many of these downtown cities in America have underground cities, which make no sense. What, did they just do a bunch of extra work for nothing, put windows and doors and streets down there for the heck of it? It's more likely that there are lower levels of the cities in America that have been built over. And there is indeed evidence that there are massive tunnel systems underneath the majority of American cities. This alone should be enough to question the construction of these cities as I wonder why people would need tunnel systems under a highly dense area with lots of people living there. I wonder. It's not like uh, there was some sort of secret technology such as sewer or electricity or service tunnels that would ever need to exist. It's not like most major cities have complex underground transportation systems. <laughs> You go to New York City, you've never seen such a thing as a train that runs underground and that has to ask, why are there tunnels going everywhere if subways don't exist? Blown the fuck out. They didn't even have proper waste management until after the 1900s. They were literally defecating in chamber pots in the 1850s. What you have is that there's this complete contradiction with the culture, technology, and population counts needed to create these cities and buildings on this magnitude and scale in such a short time frame. They were building structures in the US in just a few years that were taking hundreds of years back in Europe. Let's keep in mind what we're discussing. Many of the downtowns in America have old world buildings that do not have an in-depth historical record. They're not old world buildings. They're not old world buildings. They're just built to look like old world buildings. They're just built with a style, you fool. Some build This one has the date on the literal front, 1842. Buildings have no construction photos at all. Yet, they feel very out of place for the time period that they're said to be built in. Again, if you want proof that takes time, then we would have to list the buildings one by one as we've done in other videos. Because, again, in some cases, we're talking about buildings from 200 years ago. It's not too hard to manipulate information over multiple generations. If we look at what was being taught in public schools just 50 years ago versus what's being taught now, there's really very little consistency. Like what? Like, can you give us an example of that? Like what? Are you just gonna say that and not provide any evidence? 
why is it so crazy to question that the buildings that were being built all across America, even the ones from the early 1900s in some cases? Is it, is it, oh, uh... Taurus system says, is it bad that paranormal researchers are usually more detailed in their research of locations than this dude is? You have to understand there are different levels of derangement when it comes to conspiracy brain. Like conspiracy brain has like terminal stages, kind of like other like other diseases. Um, and paranormal people are usually on a significantly lower level because they just believe that ghosts are real. So for them, history can be very interesting because you know it will give them an idea of why the ghosts might be there. Um, but for people who advance to global conspiracies being uh, being sort of advanced by a shadowy cabal of like evil Democrats or whatever, uh, you have to you you like you have to stop caring about any of the hit of the actual history and just start sort of free form writing. So there's, they're on a different level of derangement. It's like you know, it's one of those things. Yeah, believing in ghosts is not even close to the same as believing in aliens creating old buildings. Yeah, it's like a totally different level. Yeah, perhaps we need the chart. We might need to bring up the conspiracy chart. Yeah. You know, and one of the things that Charlie oh, demanded that. We'll for see. was evidence. Evidence. Well, I agree. Where is the evidence that they built these old world buildings? Hold on. Where's that fucking, where's the debunker meme? Source! Source! That has been debunked! That's a conspiracy theory, sweaty. That's a conspiracy. Source! Debunk! This is the virgin debunker. Evidence? Ooh, oh. Why don't you, could you be more soy asking for evidence? You want to look at the chart? Okay. Hold on, let me see it. Here we go, this is the one. All right, everybody, let's do the conspiracy chart. We're gonna have to come back to this a lot, okay? Here you go. All right, this is the conspiracy chart. This was the 2021 version. It's probably been updated since, but this is the 2021 version, all right? It's a really nice image, okay? Um, it was made by a, uh, by a conspiracy, by like a legitimate, like somebody whose job is actually trying to talk people out of conspiracies, okay? So th these are the different levels. Speculation, leaving reality, reality denial and the anti-semitic point of no return and then finally completely detached from reality okay so it starts down here speculation line cointel pro big tobacco lying about cancer nsa mass surveillance and this is this here you'll notice things that actually did happen cointel pro did happen people sometimes speculate about the details but but cointel pro was a real thing watergate was a real thing the fbi actually did spy on MLK um yeah so uh uh yeah so then here's the second one starting to leave reality UFOs Area 51 JFK assassination living in a simulation Charles Manson being a CIA asset uh, the Epstein didn't kill himself Jimmy Hoffa's disappearance this is in the we have questions area where um, yeah, there are some very weird things about a lot of these things like fuck guys if you go and if you really want to um, There are there's like a lot of uh, Like there's a lot of really weird shit around UFOs and nobody really knows the full answer But like for example like the 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 United States military acknowledges some UFO footage um, There was some footage that was uh, that was declassified by the by the CIA uh, recently and it was a pretty big deal in UFO communities um, because uh, it was the CIA acknowledging that they had no explanation for a video that had been circling around in UFO communities for a while. So it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, there are questions, but like, does that mean you can jump to the conclusion that it's aliens? Probably not, yeah. So then you go up here unequivocally false but mostly harmless the titanic titanic never actually sank tupac is actually secretly alive in serbia uh alien abduct abductions 
uh, uh, Michael Jackson is still alive. Avril, Avril Lavigne was replaced. Uh, Greta Thunberg is a time traveler. Stevie Wonder isn't actually blind. Elvis is still alive. Um, this is the unequivocally false, but mostly harmless. These are mostly silly. A lot of them are not like harmful, but they are definitely start getting into the like, uh-oh. Then we go up to uh, the danger to yourself and others. Joe Biden is a robot. COVID is secretly a bioweapon designed, you know, that type of thing, quote unquote. T oh, look, Tartaria is right there. Wait, Tartaria is right here. Oh my God. Wow, I didn't even know that. Uh, uh, oh, is this? Oh, I might, I might keep this on hand. Oh shit, that's awesome. This is an interactive one. Oh, fuck yeah, we'll keep that on hand. Damn, that's gonna be helpful in the future. Thank you for that link. Uh, vaccines have microchips. Global warming is a hoax. All of these ones here are uh, are are the ones where it becomes dangerous. Look, Wayfair trafficking is on there because these are all just totally fake. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it, it's like that. Uh, Soy Boys is another one that's on there. And then, of course, the final category where you become completely detached from reality. World, world ruled by supreme shadow elites promotes hatred and violence towards marginalized groups. Uh, uh, obviously, you see all of the ones here. You see the trans agenda, conspiracy theory, great replacement, QAnon, deep state, flat earth. All of those ones are showing up here. Yeah, if this was more up to date, Balenciaga would be up here. The Balenciaga one belongs right up here, in my opinion. Um... Yeah, so as you can see, uh, and there used to be a thing on this one. It doesn't say, it, it's not on this one anymore. In the older version of this, it, there was a note up here that said that many of these are interchangeable and that there's a lot of flow back and forth between them. And that's true. Um, you'll notice that uh, most people who believe in flat earth also believe in QAnon, also believe in the deep state, also believe in the uh, reptilians, also believe in Holocaust denial, also believe in Pizzagate. Once you get to that level, you no longer are thinking clearly at all and truth doesn't matter. It's just, you're just picking things that are interesting to you and they will basically just ally with anybody who also believes in these things even when they're um contradictory yep yep yeah once you hit the anti-semitic point of no return you basically blame jews for everything yep that is that is true yep so w this is a this is a chart we will be uh returning to many 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 time uh many times we will come back to this over and over and over again yeah so that's the chart just so that everybody knows uh debunk now stop being debunkers and let's let's swallow some uh, some of this nonsense uncritically construction photos you'd be surprised to know how many fake photos were used during war actually all wars civil wars world war one and two both extensively use photo manipulations to reinforce the narratives being spread through newspapers and even radio so i could just say i'm doubtful of those construction photos in the same exact way that Moist doubted the legitimacy of the 1540s map depicting castles in America. Yes, one is crayon, right? But it's quite clear that it's depicting castles in America in the 1540s and does not seem to be manipulated. Photo. What do you mean doesn't seem to be manipulated? It was drawn. It's not even a photograph. What do you mean manipulated? Oh my god. Those, yes, even construction photos have been found to be complete fakes. Oh there are other maps god. that show castles in America, including the early engravings of America depicting massive cities. But not only that, the seven cities of Cibola from Joan Martinez chart of 1578 is a map that depicts the seven cities of Cibola, which were the mythical lands of gold that the Spanish believed to exist somewhere in the southwest of North America. Yeah, they also believed El Dorado. Oh, there it is. Compared to the better known mythical city of El Dorado. And guess what? It was a myth. It was made up. Here is a depiction on the maps. Massive castle-like fortified cities. 
If you'd ask me, Remember, I trust you. Remember, if somebody if somebody said it in the past, it has to be true. No one has ever said anything. No one has ever said anything false in the entire history uh, of the world. If they're old, it has to be true. Anyway, let's continue. These ancient manuscripts more than these low quality construction photos. Thank you for all of the Surus fans who are here. It's great to have you. I hope you guys will uh, would consider uh, popping over, just clicking on the screen and going to YouTube and pressing uh, subscribe. I would love to have you. Uh, I really like Surus a lot and I'm really happy to have you guys all here. And we do this kind of stuff all the time. So we'd love to have you guys here. Uh, thanks for coming to the website. It's, it's really wonderful to have you all. It was given to us by some of these museums. Don't believe it? Is this photo of a Mormon construction site real? Most would automatically assume since it's an old photo, that equals proof. But that's not true. It's a complete fabrication. Look at the vanilla skies. No faces. Floating ladder. They would paint on historic photos. We have an entire video exposing this history of photo manipulation. This would imply that they did not actually build these temples in such a short time span. The Mormons were said to have created multiple massive temple churches with no modern technology. Okay, but also, guys, as somebody who's written about architecture professionally, um, Mormon temples are notoriously shitty quality. Like, they're literally infamous for that. If you go and see the actual Mormon temples, they were like fucking, f they are the most tacky temples in the entirety of the United States. They have nothing. They've got fucking nothing on, uh, on, on cathedrals because they were built really shoddily with cheap, with cheap, uh, materials really fast. It's just, it's just, it's something that literally any, if you go read about Mormon temples, you will see this as a refrain. They were built very quickly. They were not built to great quality and they were built with cheap materials. They even look cheaper than other things. If you go and look at them in real life, you can see it very easily. And yet they're photo manipulating photos. And on top of that, you know, the book of Mormon actually says there were advanced civilizations in a- Wait, wait a second. Hold on a second. What, what, this isn't, this isn't even the photo that he was talking about. This isn't even the photo that he was talking about. The one that he showed had a ladder floating, but there, but that's not, that's not even depicted here. Whatever. No it's a modern different photo. technology. And yet, they're photo manipulating photos. And on top of that, you know the Book of Mormon actually says there were advanced civilizations in America before Columbus, and that they actually had cities here in America. No, I know there's a bunch of really crazy stuff in there. It might. Saint Helen says, "Wait, so are the Mormons supposed to be liars, or are they telling the truth?" <laughs> you fool. It might not be proof, but it's strange that they even mention that. How can we trust the history of these old world buildings when our historical record on many of these buildings is scarce? And you want to know the main reason why? Because there's been a great fire in every major American city, and I don't think that was by accident. Some people <laughs> say, oh, it was because of- <laughs> There's been a great fire in every American city. American cities, which for most of our history were built with shitty wooden structures because everybody was fucking poor as shit candles or that they didn't have enough resources to carry the water and put out the fire or whatever but you know they say that the chicago fire was started by a cow kicking over a lantern that ended up causing over 200 million dollars in damages which makes no sense they were supposedly building these brick buildings to be entirely fireproof so why do we see so many fires in chicago new york detroit san francisco all over America. And let's not forget the World Fairs, which we'll explain in a bit. But oh, they didn't boy. have insurance back then. You think they were just building these massive brick buildings and underground- What? They didn't have insurance back then? What? I'm sorry, what?
underground tunnels all across America just to go in and actively destroy it with fire? And not all of them were accidents. During the Civil War, in Columbia, South Carolina, the Union specifically set the city on fire to destroy the buildings and mills so that they couldn't be used by the South. They did this with many other cities as well, okay. which makes no sense because shortly after the Union came into possession of those lands. Now we're diving deep into this material. We're talking brotherhoods and fabrications of an unimaginable degree, mental mind control and population resets. You don't think that small groups of people in power aren't going to treat Earth in its All inhabit- right, everybody, we're going fucking ultimate instinct. It's fucking time. That's right. It's time to go from zero to 60. We just went from, we just went from, don't you think it's interesting to now we will discuss the secret Tartarian brotherhoods. Woo! Tense like a game of Sims or civilization. The reason why we're not privy to this information is that these cities in America were literally founded. That's why they say that in history with the founding of a building or city. They're telling you and then redefining the words so that it doesn't seem like what it is. The next aspect of this alternative history involves secret societies. Guys, 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 listen, shut the fuck up. The, the, the dictionary is in on it, okay? The dictionary. They don't want you to know that founded and found are different words. That you're not, I mean, they're the same word. They want you to think that they're different words, but they're the same word. They even sound similar with slightly different letters. And as we know, words can't mean different things. Yeah, Freemasons. And I know that many think that's a joke, right? But we aren't approaching this from your typical Illuminati Christian perspective, or not even from a conspiracy point of view, trying to blame everything on the evil Freemasons or something. No, instead, we're no. discussing secret societies from a historical perspective. Go look up Oddfellows, then go to your downtown and notice how every downtown has or has had an Oddfellow Lodge. If Freemason, Oddfellow, and Catholic Knight societies had lodges in every American city, is that not suspicious and or at least worthy of a note in the history books? Everybody, go to every... <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 bazinga. <laughs> Go to every city in America and you will notice that there is a Burger King, a McDonald's, and a Wendy's. Doesn't that seem strange to you? Doesn't it seem a little strange that every city in America would have a Burger King, a Wendy's? And a McDonald's? You sheep. You sheep. Yes, obviously Freemasons and Oddfellows in the modern day are not the same thing that they were a hundred years ago. Nowadays, if you go to a lodge, there's a bunch of old people getting together and talking about life. But back in the day, they were doing all sorts of rituals. The Freemasons aren't the ones in control. Neither are the Oddfellows. They are the mind-controlled orphans ruled by the Phoenician-Venetian families. They are the top orphans of the club. Sacred societies have always been prevalent in the Catholic Church. These Freemasons were called Knights, and they evolved into the modern groups that we know as Freemasons and what we know in the public today as the Illuminati. I told you, I fucking told you we were accelerating at a rapid pace. I fucking told you we were going, that we just hit the point where we're going, it's like, it's like on a, on a roller coaster. When you get to the top and all of a sudden it's just like, just you're getting fucking blasted. You, you, with no time to think. Just the Phoenicians, the secret Phoenician order of the Roman Knights of the Templar. They were the Pope and the anti-Pope and the secret Pope and the third Pope. They gave them the knighthood and they have a secret relic that gives them the ability to connect with the giants and the gnomes are coming after the goblins and the goblins are turning against the gnomes and everybody you just don't understand the democrats are trying to keep this truth from you you need to wake up you need to wake up and subscribe to demon mama right now so that you can get your brain force plus otherwise you will never ever be able to understand this you understand me you will never be able to understand what those demon rats are doing to you if you don't hurry up and get on this fucking thing right now press down on press that fucking subscribe button and consider donating some money so i can keep telling you the goddamn truth Freemasons are not the Illuminati or the people in control. 
these Catholic orphans in the 1700s that actually go back to earlier societies as the Rosicrucians and the Knights Templar, all of which were controlled by the church as pawns in the play of divide and conquer. So these Catholic orphans started their own society, the Odd Fellows, to educate the orphan. And it's weird because they have these massive old world buildings with no construction photos that were also used as asylums and orphanages in many early American cities. They also contributed greatly to funding the schools and providing hospitals for a large amount of cities in America. These odd fellows were just a bunch of odd fellows and were supposed to believe that they were just philanthropists giving all their money to the needy. That's the story they want you to believe. But this is when it gets dark. And this is all, according to the official story, factual. During the 1820 to 1950 period, there was an abundance of orphan trains that would move children from Europe all around the United States. They would do this to repopulate cities and use children for forced labor. This was going on before the 1800s as before the Oddfells there were the foundling hospitals, many of which have old world architecture and are quite massive. They were also used as sanitariums. Just to remind you, because yes, this does tie back to Tartaria, right now we're discussing orphans and brotherhoods because we're attempting to show you how history could easily be manipulated and or fabricated. What? We will come back to the buildings in just a moment. Huh? What? How does this prove? How does the fact that there were orphans and that also that there were groups that considered themselves secret societies how does that prove that, oh, uh, let's just continue. The Foundling Hospital logo clearly depicts Diana of Ephesus, the Queen Bee, and the Star of Ishtar. Okay, and who cares? These are, act those were gods, those were Greek gods. Of course they're gonna appear in imagery elsewhere, what? Clearly depicts Diana of Ephesus, the Queen Bee, I mean, obviously Diana of Ephesus is mega hot, and if you wouldn't if you wouldn't date a girl with nine hundred breasts, then you're an idiot. You would. You, are you fucking? Are you? Are you guys fucking? Be, are are these people fucking telling me that a lady with all these tits is supposed to be somehow not cool? That's like the hottest shit I've ever seen in my entire life. That's like the coolest shit I've ever seen. Are you telling me you wouldn't immediately wife a woman who had like fifteen breasts? Every single person who would not inst instantaneously wife. Uh, okay, well, obviously some of you don't like boobies, I guess, but that you're fine. You're excused. But anybody who likes boobs, you're lying if you would not marry the, the queen bee. And the star of Ishtar. Now, this is when we get into the importance of occult symbolism. Another subject too in depth to discuss in detail at the moment. But this oh, is a clear convenient. reference to genetic cloning. We have an entire video on this subject that's pretty mind blowing. But the ancients and midi I love this! We have an entire video on this subject that's pretty mind blowing. Frog! I love this! Fucking oh my god, frog! Frog! But the ancients and medieval alchemists were well aware of creating humans from within a tube. This process is actually described in detail by Paracelsus. Many of the most enlightened minds of the Renaissance period believed it to be possible to create a fully formed human without the use of sex. Also, the Cabbage Patch Kids from the 1980s are not just some crazy doll hybrid people would feed each other- Yes, yes, we're getting back onto the Cabbage Patch! Oh, yes! Okay, for those of you who are- who, who missed the last episode of Conspiracy Mama, you need to understand that, um... You need to understand that the, um... Uh, okay, hold on. So you need to understand that the Cabbage Patch Kids, this guy believes that the Cabbage Patch Kids are a reference to literal human baby cloning facilities that existed in the early 1800s before the great mud flood if i th i think it was before the mud flood uh that that actually the babies were being cloned and grown for some reason 
He never explained the real reason why, except for that it was a repopulation effort. But apparently the babies were also being stolen from Europe while being cloned at the same time. And this produced too many babies. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't matter. The truth is Cabbage Patch Kids are, are referencing the true, definitely, definitely true historical fact that babies were grown in pods. There you go. Unveil. We're up in order to get one. Now this concept of babies being grown in cabbages has a much darker history. We have a massive collection of French postcards from the early 1900s that depict children being grown and sold in cabbage patches. And no, it's not just- Mogminer br The Mogminer browser says, FROG! And sends me- Fucking accurate! I agree. Thank you very, very much. It's a friendly, funny postcard. There were hundreds of these, and some of them are real photos of babies. Oh, sick. Andrew Kowalski, Andrew Kowalski says, uh, as a postcard dealer, the postcards of the children uh, with in, in, the, the children in the cabbage patches are exceptionally cheap and essentially worthless. Yeah, it was very clear that they were mass, they were like mass published or mass produced novelties. We this is this is a reference. These postcards are a reference to a former video. We we better continue. Most likely orphans. They're showing us through symbols the process of repopulation. We have proof of this because the first reference to cabbage patches in growing humans is actually from an 1896 film which was the first movie ever made, La Fée aux Choux, by the female director Alice Guy. Go watch that movie and tell me it's not disturbing the way she threw around those babies. Alice Guy said herself that she made this film to promote the 1896 incubators at the World's Fair in Paris. So these World Fairs were used for selling children? They were literally called hatcheries and there's even a postcard from the 1900s that showed this. Were they growing children in incubators for the process of repopulation? It's described in the artwork clearly. So what you have is empty cities, buildings that were founded, and these buildings were then found by a group of cult orphans that we call Freemasons basically, and they founded these orphanages and asylums for repopulating these cities. Then they fed us our history, and even the rituals of the holidays. Many other mind control games that we play as children like Pin the Tail on the Donkey were weird. What? Mind control? Pin the tail on the donkey? When was the- okay, I'm sorry, but that is like a boomer ass reference. I'm a fucking boomer by comparison to you all, and I never actually literally actually played a game of pin the tail on the donkey. That's like a- They're actually secretly initiated into their club. And this phenomena of Tartaria, lost buildings, and civilizations is not just with the US. This is actually the same thing in every European city as well. It's ever- Yeah, everybody. It's this- the, Actually, I was lying the whole time. This guy was lying because they're not actually old world structures. The old world structures were themselves referencing the Tartarians. And this gets into the idea that Tartaria was a global civilization because Many of these old world buildings that you see in America resemble European architecture. It's not just in America. Oh. You can find this exact same style of government buildings all around the world. I'll explain that soon. But I wanted to start with America because Charlie was saying why would anyone look into this that people just want to make stuff up for no reason. But I don't think you could easily make this stuff up to be honest. I also think he doesn't fully understand what we're discussing, but I really don't blame him. There's still a lot of work to be done. The interesting thing about these buildings is that it's actually shocking to find out how bad the historical record is when it comes to the creation of many of these old world buildings in America. Also, not to mention the amount of buildings that were lost or destroyed to fires. It's important to understand our history and if it's true that some of these buildings in America were actually here before the so-called settlers, 
then what would that imply? Would that mean that there was an advanced culture in America and that yes, it wasn't? Yes, 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 that's what it means. That's the only possible option. It, it has to be that. It wasn't just primitive Native Americans when the Europeans arrived, like we're told. Now, I know that people who may be new and from his channel may think, okay, where's the evidence? I mean, come on, where's the evidence? And it's this yeah, don't be a debunker. Those guys are virgin debunkers. Oh, I'm debunking. Automatic source type thinking that's honestly really limiting. That's not to say it's bad to source and document things. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying most of the time people are demanding some university approved mainstream sources. But when it comes to alternative history, many of the things we're discussing do not have an authorized answer because we're questioning and challenging histories that were set hundreds of years ago. Many of our historical records- So wait, actually he's debunking. Before the 1700s are just court documents that could have been easily altered or forged by the ruling elite. We're given a history, much of which could have been easily fabricated. And we're just talking letters, documents, photos. It is possible to fake. For example, if we're discussing the Civil War and I say that it's fake, it's all a lie, and you say, where's your evidence? Well, there is no official evidence. That doesn't mean anything. What is it? evidence a history book from the university or the museums telling you the story is that evidence for you many times people walk right into a museum learn the history yet none of these reddit minded people who immediately demand evidence say anything to these museums some of them are using modern paintings reddit minded did he seriously just call everyone in the anyone who believes that a, that a museum could have any statement of truth in it or read it? That that is a, that is a self report. That right there, straight up, straight up self report. Okay, this guy is is telling you that he spends too much time getting roasted on Reddit. Came out of fucking nowhere. Oh my god, guys! Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy fucking shit. Holy fucking shit, guys. Oh my god. Oh my- Elon Musk is just Pol Pot. Holy fucking shit. Th it, they're the same person. Elon Musk, Twitter is fake, everybody. Twitter is fake. And the historical photos that they do show many times are photo manipulated. But what if I show you the clearly staged and photo manipulated photos of the Civil War? And also the fact that they had cameras during that time, but there's not one photo of the actual war. Would you not be questionable? I could go on listing all the Freemasons who were both on Union and Confederate sides. Wow, imagine that. Imagine that it, that in a civil war that a fucking social group uh, a secret society that was mostly about getting drunk with your friends in a place that your wife can't come. Wow, imagine that they might be split on who they support depending on where they live. Wow, imagine that. Imagine getting drafted into the war regardless of whether you belong to a secret society or not based on the place that you live. Holy shit. It was a stage, a brotherly act in which they were executing divide and conquer, and it's the same exact strategy today. Essentially, first you have these empty- What is- I'm sorry. And it's the same exact strategy today. What am I even supposed to be looking at here? Red circle, red circle, red circle. If this is an image overlaid on two other images, just with three random red circles on it. What am I supposed to be seeing here? Amazing. Incredible. Essentially, first you have these empty cities in America, and we can discuss more on why that is and what happened, but essentially, you have cities that were hijacked and emptied out. 
Now I'm not saying this is proof, as I know how easily photos can be manipulated, but there are several photos from the 19th century showing cities being completely empty with no people. And no, it's not exposure issues. Look at the San Francisco panorama from 1860 in HD. Now, explain to me, why don't they have full-on HD photos for the construction process of some of these older architectures in other cities? Also, I don't think that these have been manipulated as why would you photo manipulate a city to be empty? To make it look more presentable? To who? And that's a lot of work. Who would be asking a photographer to edit out all the people? And if we're willing to consider the idea that a photographer went in and masked out every single person, but are not willing to consider that construction photos can be faked, then I don't know what to tell you. Uh. It seems more logical to conclude that these photos have little to no manipulation in many cities, including Chicago, were ghost cities in the early 1900s. Most of the in the early 1900s, in the early 1900s, Chicago was a ghost city. Chicago. Oh. Just a level of just derangement. We've reached the level of derangement that is just. Yeah, yeah. As St. Helen says, guys, 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 the only photos that weren't altered are the ones that, that agree with my narrative. Yeah, this is one of the things that we, um, this is one of the things that you're going to encounter with this channel, and especially, is that everything that doesn't agree with this narrative is doctored, and everything that does agree with this narrative is always definitely not doctored. Or, or anything. There can't be anything wrong with any. It's so fucking funny, like, how freeform it is. It's so obvious that this guy has decided on a narrative, which he wrote in his head, and then just picks and chooses any evidence and rules out any evidence that doesn't agree with the narrative. It's how all conspiracy brain works works you already have a narrative in mind and none of the evidence matters it's narrative first always all right hold on a second i'm gonna keep the video playing but i gotta run to the bathroom enjoy time photo manipulation was used to add people back into photos because they were so dull and depressing they needed to give it the illusion of having more life that may be too much of a leap for most people but what you have to understand is the control of the media and information back then pictures were the media and there was and still is so much power in an image this was well known back then there's also power behind the narrative or history behind a place building or event why is it so crazy to assume that the propaganda and lies that we see in the modern day are in fact the result of a much deeper history that involves the inheriting of the treasures of the ancients or in other words our city's infrastructures were already here Many of the old world buildings in downtowns, or boom towns, are actually the remnants of old world cities that were not American, or at least built in the fashion they tell us. So yeah, all of American history is a huge fabrication. That's number one. Now if you want me to explain that, that takes time. I noticed that Charlie couldn't even imagine the concept of watching a 50 minute video. But then how are you going to say there's no evidence? There are definitely arguments to support the claim that American history has been heavily distorted and manipulated. With that said, that was the brief explanation, and understand that I'm attempting to compress a vast subject while at the same time accommodating short attention spans. I haven't even really got to the main definition of what Tartaria is. It seems that the best way to approach this was just to jump into it because many have not even considered that American cities could have been hijacked cities, so I wanted to focus more on that rather than getting into the semantics on what exactly is Tartaria. But now, I can explain that in more detail, which should answer many of your questions of exactly what we were discussing. Okay, so we begin the detailed explanation by moving to terms. Our definition of Tartaria ah, may right. differ from <clears throat> other research. Sorry about that, everybody. I just needed to, I needed to go to the bathroom real quick, and I knew that I wasn't going to miss anything important. The images are attacking me directly. Go back. No, I will not. Let's go. His definition of the term. So we need to first establish what are we talking about? Because Charlie kept saying, oh, what are the Tartarians? I have are to go back? Why? What do I have to go back for? What did I miss? He almost went to JQ shit. God damn it.
Oh, fine, 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 fine. Fine. Years were already here. Many of the old world buildings in downtowns or boom towns are actually the remnants of old world Ooh. cities that were not American. Some or, perfect dark stuff. Or at least built in the fashion they tell us. So yeah, all of American history is a huge fabrication. That's number one. Now, if you want me to explain that, that takes time. I noticed that Charlie couldn't even imagine the concept of watching a 50 minute video. But then how are you going to say there's no evidence? There are definitely arguments to support the claim that American history has been heavily distorted and manipulated. With that said, that was the brief explanation. And understand that I'm attempting to compress a vast subject. Tartaria, the Irish connection, the Phoenician hijack, lost ancient science, sciences and magic, stolen architecture and iconoclasm, Antiquitech and the lost technologies, mud flood buried buildings, cataclysms and resets, star forts and the fortified cities, royalty, the secret brotherhoods and symbols, asylums, orphans and odd fellows, underground tunnels, waste management, what? And subterranean cities, suppressed Moorish history, giant humans from a past age, ignored Christian origins. While well, at the same time accommodating short attention spans, I haven't even really got to the main definition of what Tartaria is. It seems that the best way to approach this was just to jump into it because many have not even considered that American cities could have been hijacked cities so I wanted to focus more on that rather than getting into the semantics on what exactly is Tartaria. But now I can explain that in more detail which should answer many of your questions of exactly what we were discussing. Okay, so we begin the detailed explanation by moving to terms. Our definition- Oh yeah, uh, uh, Anarcho Delphi, uh, Anarcho Delphis, or Delphi's, uh, says this is fucking amazing. They're just completely erasing the heritage of the actual indigenous fucking people who built cities before American cities. Yes, this is something, this is something that, um, uh, uh this is something that happens- Oh no, what, what, what's going on? No, really? What, what's- what happened? What? Not again. Why does this keep happening? Oh, my fucking commands broke again. I hate that. All right. Sorry about that, everybody. For some reason, my controls keep breaking on my OBS, and it's really fucking annoying. I don't know why it keeps happening, but it's driving me crazy. Um, yeah, something. there's been something going on where OBS stops taking commands, and it's fucking annoying. It means I have to do this manually, and it's very annoying. Okay. Uh, but back to what Anarcho Delphi said. Uh, Anarcho Delphi said, this is fucking amazing. They're completely erasing the heritage of indigenous people who lived, who built cities before American cities. Yes, they will always do this. Conspiracy theorists always do this because they don't actually care about history. The truth is there are interesting, super fascinating aspects of history um, that are really amazing, but because it wasn't built by al by secret aliens and because it isn't a narrative that, that allows them to be the secret truth teller revealing the the dark secret of the world they ignore it completely even though there is evidence of really 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 like major uh uh, uh settlements and and constructions that were pre that you know were were pre-colonial america by a long shot even though there is hard evidence of, of a lot of these things uh it doesn't let you say that the aliens are secretly out to get you and that you're re reporting on the satanic alien uh, uh, secret cultist, uh, secret society people. It, it really does just boil down to that. They don't actually care about the actually amazing, interesting history of people around the world because they are too caught up in their own little fantasy. Yep. It's fucking pathetic. Anyway, let's continue. Definition of Tartaria may differ from other researchers' definition of the term. So we need to first establish what are we talking about because Charlie kept saying, oh, what are the Tartarians? Are they reptilians or underground apartment dwellers? Well, let's give the shortest definition possible. Tartaria is really just lost old world history. Okay, cool. Thank That's you. it. Obviously, there's more to it than just that. What is history? Can history be faked or tampered with? Many are willing to accept that the mainstream media can lie in the modern day. 
people still have issues trusting authority in recent times, but why is that same logic not applied to the history books? Let me just give you a couple things to consider before we give a definition. For example, with the world's fairs. Now hold on. The story that we're given is that these architectures seen in these photos of the World's Fair in America during the early 1900s were all just built in a short two to three year span with no construction photos and that they were all built from wooden pallets. Now really think about that for a second. Look at the Chicago's World's Fair. You see these embankments and notice the level of detail on this architecture. Even if this was just wood, this would have been a massive feat. Yet, all we get for a historic record of the construction is some shoddy footage that actually comes from a movie about the World's Fair. Those are photos, aren't they? Aren't these the exact photos that he's asking for? Wouldn't that be contradict his narrative if there are photos of the construct? Notice how, no, actually they're just, anything that's inconvenient to his narrative, you just have to throw it out immediately. And that's it. There wasn't just one World's Fair either, but several in the United States during the 1900s. So they just built these massive World's Fairs just to tear them down a couple years later? Many cities had these, even Louisville, Kentucky and Nashville, Tennessee. I mean, really look how massive some of these things are. Yeah, they were massive and they were built with cheap stuff because it was a fair. It was meant to be showy, they're facades. They are entire cities. And so, this brings up several questions. Were these buildings truly built the way that we have been taught? Or were they already here? If you type in Tartaria, the basic gist of what they'll tell you is that Tartaria was a global lost civilization with advanced technology that appeared on old maps and was a They filter results. Notice that? Did you see that? That was a global lost civilization with advanced they filter results. Who's fucking they? Who's they? Who's they? It's technology that appeared on old maps and was erased from history. As Charlie mentioned, Like, obviously, we all know that Google does obviously filter results. That is the basic the main... function of a search engine. We know that Google fucking filters results. But why wouldn't you just say that? Google filters the results. No, instead you say they. Because it lets you... It, 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 it's a Rorschach blot test that allows anybody to insert their, their, like, threat of choice. Is it the reptilians? Is it the Tartarians? Is it the gnomes? Is it somebody else? points seem to be old maps and yes this may not be conclusive especially with the maps that just say tartary on it but i do think a map from 1540 depicting castles in america regardless of its crayon or not is quite suspicious regarding the history that they tell us in the founding of america also charlie kept equating tartaria to atlantis which is fair but to make the distinction clear the idea of tartaria is from a much more recent time meaning when people are talking about Tartaria, they're actually talking about the 1500s to 1700s period where a civilization that existed in a far more recent time was left out from the history books specifically because it was hijacked. Where is the evidence? Where is the source? Well now we're getting into alternative history and false timelines. Let's start with the evidence on how the whole story of Pompeii is a complete fabrication. Why? What? Wh wh why? What? Who fucking, why are we jumping to Pompeii now? Fucking stick to Tartaria. Give us the evidence, ooh. There are a number of glaring inconsistencies in the academically approved narrative of the city's destruction huh? and many arguments that support that Pompeii is actually from the 1600s and not 2000 years ago as the history books tell us. Some inconsistencies include the frescoes that were discovered there and dated to 79 AD actually resemble the techniques used by medieval painters including the famous painting of the three graces found in the house of the three graces in Pompeii. Furthermore, Vesuvius can be seen on 16th century maps showing that the volcano was active long after the traditional date of the eruption and Pompeii was not in fact lost.
There's a 1631 memorial plaque on the road to Naples that lists Pompeii. Does he think that a volcano, that a mountain disappears when a volcano erupts? Is that what he thinks goes on? Does he think that like when the volcano erupts, the mountain just is disappears? It like it like it like deflates and just flattens out or something? <laughs> yeah, despawns once the animation is finished. Pompeii and Herculaneum as the victims of the 1631 eruption of Vesuvius. There were surgical tools in Pompeii that were not supposed to exist during that time. Yet Says they who? were found in Pompeii. Says fucking who? Says who that there that surgical tools didn't exist at that time? The surgical tools have existed for a fucking long ass time. The Greeks did surgery. And are dated to 2000 years ago. Yet they resemble medieval surgical tools? Oh yeah, and how could there be pineapples in their frescoes? Is that what that- are you- are you sure that's a pineapple? If the pineapple wasn't introduced into Europe until 1493. Well, let's keep in mind that Pompeii was supposedly discovered in 1748. What? Again- Is this really your argument? Is that there shouldn't be a pineapple in there? We have an entire video breaking this down. The evidence is there. You just have to be willing to look. <laughs> but okay, let's try to define Tartaria. I, I told you, these videos always get to the point of like being genuinely so funny. Like, ah, something in this painting looks, reminds me of a pineapple. Now I'm gonna make a 40 minute video about how it must be an alien conspiracy. I mean, a Tartarian, I mean, uh, a Freemason odd fellow society, uh, 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 fucking the Shriners. The Shriners were, were telling us the secrets uh, of the of the non-pineapple having Pompeians. Oh my fucking god. Yeah, again. Tartaria is a term that became popular around the 2018 to 2020 period before it became quickly filtered by YT's algorithm. Tartaria is basically the next big conspiracy after FE. If you don't know anything about history, that may be the only way to explain it to you. It's a massive rabbit hole that questions all of our official history. Hmm. The difference is Tartaria is alternative history and FE is alternative cosmology. FE? It gets interesting. Wait, what, what's FE again? What's FE? Fallen, M what's that? What's FE? Flat Earth. Oh, okay. So he said that's why. Okay. So he's that. Sorry, 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 sorry. I didn't realize that's what he meant in this context. <sighs> because Charlie was trying to bunch all the conspiracies under one label, implying that Tartaria is just something people want to believe in. He even said that he could do the same thing and just say a bunch of nonsense and make it sound True! believable. True! I mean, go for it. But there's much more to this than you want to believe, go for and it. I don't blame anyone for not wanting to look into it. But claiming it's just made up is ironic since these people demand evidence. Look up mud volcano. Oh, okay. All right, let's do it. A mud volcano or a mud dome is a landform created by the eruption of mud or slurries, water and gases. Several geological processes may cause the formation of mud volcanoes. Mud volcanoes are not true igneous volcanoes as they do not produce lava and are not necessarily driven by magmatic activity. Oh, hey, they even got a video of one. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. Sure. All right, dude, thank you. That was super great. No sound must be a faked video. Without even watching an entire video, which like I said, is understandable since they do tend to run long, but without looking into it, it's not very impartial to deem it as nonsense. History, 
once you dive past all the filler, is filled with mistakes, plot holes, and complete fabrications. And it's hard not to notice those inconsistencies and not ask why- Yeah, dude, and your video is literally the most fabricated bullshit I've ever heard. I don't think you finished a single fucking thought in this entire goddamn video. You've just listed off weird things with contextless images with no sources that just look weird. It's all just like an aesthetic, like, a slurry of like, ooh, spooky, with little like spooky music in the background. Questions. Even questions that- might seem obvious or stupid at first. So to finalize the terms, let me give you our definition of Tartaria. Tartaria is the phenomena or category of alternative history that delves into the research of lost history and civilizations, hijacks and stolen buildings, magic, alchemy, and cloning, antiquitech, cataclysms, mud floods, buried buildings, star forts and fortified cities, royal bloodlines and secret brotherhoods, asylums, orphans, and odd fellows, underground tunnels and waste management, and suppressed Morris history. By labeling Tartaria as simply a civilization, we're missing out on many aspects of this mystery, because this guy just listed a bunch of random things and then says this is the definition of Tartaria. Oh my motherfucking god. That's just one piece. It's not until you have all the pieces that a bigger picture starts to appear. There is evidence for each one of these subjects, but in order to- Lush Luscious Lucia says this video has been fucking incredible. You're welcome. The reason why this video has been incredible is because you've been watching it with me. If you tried to watch this shit on your own, you would be- you would be fucking- you would have a headache by the end of it. But instead, you get to laugh because I say funny things, and I also bring up relevant points, and I make this thing fucking tolerable. Trust me. You're welcome. To understand Tartaria, we have to have that base. We're about to go down a rabbit hole of history that was not taught to us. We're so about to? Oh my god, there's still 30 minutes left in this video. Okay, we gotta go. We gotta yes, keep going. Yes, that means there's going to be some things that you have to investigate for yourself. Oh Meaning god, there's no crazy. official answer. No, keep that in mind. I said we're doing Cooking Mama. We will do Cooking Mama afterwards. Shut the fuck up. We'll do Cooking Mama. But this is just meant to be a summary, and I can only say so much on each subject. Okay, so let's start off with lost history and civilizations. So yeah, obviously you know about Atlantis, but there are other more recent cultures that were completely wiped and left out from the history books, being instead labeled as fantasy or mythology. One theory that was not started by us and actually has been discussed by several scholars since the 17th century is the Irish origins of civilization. Oh, yes! And yeah, I get it, that might sound funny to people who have never heard it before, but there's actually a shocking Wha amount- What? What? What is this racism? What the fuck is the racism? Why? ...amount of evidence to support that Gaelic and Irish Christianity is in fact the original church and it was just straight up hijacked by the Roman Catholic Church. How do you expect me to give you proof for that in such a short time? I mean, be reasonable. But it's yeah, yeah, the guys. Etymology. Yeah, guys. Fucking be reasonable. Be reasonable. I say that actually, no. The 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 Roman Catholic Church did not actually uh, expand outwards with the Roman Empire, conquering uh, previously pagan areas and erasing their culture and imposing their religion onto them. And you say, uh, what? Be reasonable. Be reasonable. I say that actually the Irish people invented Catholicism and then traded it to the Romans and then the Romans came back and reconquered them. Be fucking reasonable, my man. Get real. Gee, the allegorical oh, references oh of the God. Bible that were not meant to be taken literally, but allegorically. One of the best books on the subject is called Irish Wisdom Preserved in Bible and Pyramids by Connor McDarry. The Phoenicians. This is another subject of Tartaria that we bring up a lot because it also causes a lot of confusion, but it was designed uh... that way. The Phoenicians are the later Canaanites, but they are also the first civilization credited to creating an alphabet, mathematics, and advanced sea navigation. While many researchers have shown the connections between the ancient Phoenicians and the Celts, including the similarity between Gaelic and Semitic languages, 
Mainstream history will say that this is because the Phoenicians settled in Ireland and that the Celts came from their culture. But the difference in art, culture, and oral legend yeah, I think this guy is unironically trying to make the argument that the actual Jews are the Irish people. I think that's I, I think that's what he's trying to say. It's really hard to follow, but I think that's what he's trying to say. In Ireland is unlike any other in the world. And some of the first megalithic structures were created in Ireland with astrological associations thousands of years before the pyramids. As presented in Irish wisdom and Bible and pyramids, the story is actually in reverse. The Phoenicians are the later Hebrews, those of the yew tree, or the corrupted version of the original spirituality. This is what we refer to as the Phoenician hijack. The process in which the old church, the church of Iessa, or the early Phoenician or Phoenician Celtic Ibernian priesthood was destroyed, plagiarized, and then renamed, suppressed from history. These peoples were then hijacked and became the later Phoenicians, otherwise known as the Canaanites. They became the new church. This is the Holy Roman Empire. The proof what? is in the language, culture, oral histories, and the forgeries that are within the Bible as presented by Connor McDarry. Whoa! The fact Whoa! We're going so, we've accelerated so fast. We're going on like six loop-de-loops in a row. We're all getting sick. Oh my God, the dizziness. As presented in that book are undeniable and seen clearly with anyone who has a basic understanding of Irish history. So the, tr the real Jews were the Irish and then the Phoenicians, uh, the Phoenicians, uh, killed off and erased the history of the Irish people before becoming the Romans. And then they faked the Bible. In fucking incredible. This guy's fan fiction game is it? No, they became the Jews. Wait, the, the Irish people became the Jews? So like the Irish people had to flee and became the Jews, but then the Phoenicians uh, took over? Am I following this correctly? I'm trying to follow this. I'm trying to make sure I'm not missing anything. The Phoenicians became the Jews. The Irish are the descendants of Noah. Ah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, yeah, it all makes sense now. It all makes sense now. So to explain that in a different way, after the fall of Atlantis, the survivors landed in ancient Ireland. This civilization oh! began to mingle with the- Oh, oh my God, oh my God, sorry. I thought that we weren't talking about Atlantis. I, I'm such a fool. The Irish people were the Atlanteans and the Atlanteans fled to Ireland where they built the original good church and then the phoenicians uh 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 took over uh, they erased the irish history aka the atlantean history and then the phoenicians pretended to be the jewish people so that they could found a fake religion to replace the original based irish religion got it fucking got it thank goodness for atlant the atlantean connection i would have never gotten that variety of other cultures producing similar legends traditions, and sciences that were spread across the world. They then made their way to the east and into the Indus Valley. Then the start of Mesopotamian cultures or Arya cultures such as Sumeria or Arya. And then this continued okay. into Tartaria or Asia. Essentially, in our research, we connect the Tartarians to the ancient Scythians. This is referenced by oh. several 18th century historians and the Scythians were the Celts who had traveled east. But again, they tell us the story in reverse. The term Tartar is actually a Gaelic term that is associated with the story of an Irish soldier far out east catching a Tartar, a thief. The reason we bring up Ireland is because there are many researchers who have covered the suppressed history of the ancient many. Celts and Druids. There are many. Can we have one? Can we can we find one? Or is it just you? You do not count as many. The Druids were literally the main enemy of the Roman Empire. 
They were described as savages and barbaric, yet the history that we receive on them come from the Roman historian Josephus himself. Okay, but that's a different argument. Saying that the Romans did not give a good history of their enemies is different than claiming that secretly the 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 Irish people were actually uh, they were actually secretly Atlanteans and that they populated the earth by sneaking by sailing all over the place. Uh, let's go. Let's just go. Let's continue. Let's so, continue, everybody. After Stay Atlantis, strong. Stay strong. The Church of Iessa was established in Ireland and expanded all the way to the Bering Strait where they actually crossed over and established colonies on the northwest of America as depicted on old maps. The map that you're looking at is the Monte map from 1587. There are some really interesting things on this map, but okay. you can see that there are three massive cities in Florida during this time and also elsewhere throughout the US. Are those cities? Is that what that's, is that what that's showing? Is that showing massive cities? Yes, that really shouldn't be on this map. There are also maps that show massive amounts of architecture all over Asia and Africa that are no longer there. And this does not align with the official narrative of that time period. Now over time, many different- Oh, thank you. You are so amazing. This is like the most clutch thing you could possibly deliver to me right now. Oh, thank you. Oh, wait. Oh, thank you so much. Wait, wasn't mine a double? Mm. Maybe not. No. Oh, okay. I thought maybe. It's all good, man. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. You're fine. Thank you. This is the most clutch thing. Getting some food right now is the most important thing ever. Holy shit. I'm so ready to fucking eat. Let's do this. Nations and cultures were formed. It wasn't just the Irish, and each of these colonies were allowed to start up their own nations. It was originally a system of spiritual allegory with the intention of creating humans with a sense of morality, with a pursuit of working for a higher self, began to become abused by certain states and this led to the creation of religion. The confusing part is that we have been fed false timelines since our birth. For example, Rome. Just as we mentioned some inconsistencies with Pompeii, there are many more to consider. Oh God. One of the most popular points to bring up in the Tartaria community is the works of Fomenko. He's a scholar who has written on the subject of false chronologies and presents the idea that Rome may have added um. a thousand years to the timeline in order to extend their power over history. What? This gets into one of the main chronologers that is responsible for a modern day timeline, Josephus Scaliger, or what we know as Scaligerian history. What's interesting is that the people responsible for a modern day chronology were actually religious fanatics attempting to condense all of human history into a 5,000 year time period. Many historical figures throughout no. time have argued for alternative versions of this chronology, including Isaac Newton. Fomenko's work is quite detailed showing a number of inconsistencies in dates, historical figures, and dating of major events so that have been altered to fit a specific narrative. This isn't conclusive or anything, but definitely interesting to mention. But not only was our calendar system altered in the creation of the Roman Church, but on top of that, they began using a J for a 1. This can be seen in many old plaques, coat of arms, Got and it. even buildings. But no one knows Clean why it. they did this. Based. It just seems to be some type of brotherhood of reference to Based the phantom time hypothesis. That the Roman church falsified the extent of her rule. Interestingly, J is the fourth least used letter in the modern English alphabet. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? What's that supposed to fucking mean? Alphabet. Yet, it's said to have been created in the 16th century. But then why do so many biblical names start with a J? There are hundreds in- Oh my god, that's so stupid! Just because the letter wasn't used doesn't mean that the name- that the sound didn't exist. Are you fucking kidding me? Also, Biblical names were in a- didn't use the English language fucking alphabet, you idiot! Oh my god, this is so dumb! I'm sorry, this is so ridiculous. This is- this is the dumbest thing I've heard in this entire video. Everything else, the- the goblins, the gnomes, all of that was forgivable, but this right here is just so ridiculous. It- and the reason why it's so infuriating is because this is- 
This interrupts his own argument. His own argument that English isn't like, it doesn't have primacy. And also it, it's a giant self-report because it reveals that this guy doesn't actually know anything about anything. And that he's just like a weird white supremacist who disguises it as like some fucking weird conspiracy theory thing. Oh my fucking God. Oh my fucking God. Including Jesus, James, Jeremiah, and it all comes from the Roman Bible. Why so many names with a J and how many translations is that for a letter that was born in the 16th century and a book that was supposedly written a thousand years prior? We bring this up because Fomenko specifically points out how the J was also used in dating documents, buildings, and art. It was a method in which they could falsify history through forgery and plagiarism. What? Again, we're not the ones to come up the with letter this. J? There's mountains of research to go through on this subject of the Roman Catholic Church and forgery. You'll have to investigate that further if you're looking for your evidence, as we're dealing with history that has been handed to us by royal elites. For example, with Pliny the Younger and Pliny the Elder, and some other famous historians from this era who are also responsible for our perspective of history, well, the earliest traces of these documents come from the 15th century. The first Pliny epistles were published in Italy 1471. There's no real first copy of Pliny the Elder, but there are none prior to 1400s. History can be easily forged, especially when we're discussing a period in which the Roman church still had power over all of Europe and then secretly moving her power into the Venetian families. Don't you think it's weird that the Romans had all this amazing technology and then somehow they just lost it? Concrete, aqueducts, paved roads, realistic sculpture, indoor flush toilets, greenhouses, and advanced architecture that huh? we really couldn't even do today with modern technology. Yet somehow Wait, this was just all forgotten and then we went through- Things we can't do today with modern technology? Like what? What things can't we do right now that the Romans could do with modern technology, bro? One! Give me one example! One! Dude, I, I guarantee you this motherfucker, his toilet doesn't flush in his house because it's been clogged for 40 years, and so he believes that no toilets flush. He's like, yeah, I've never seen a flushing toilet. Read <laughs> Dark Age for 1,500 years? Then out of nowhere, literally, we have a shocking amount of progression of art, music, and literature, all coming from around the 17th century. Before that, there are very few examples, and their dates are questionable. The point being is that there's a huge gap between the time of Rome, through the Dark Ages, to all of a sudden all our music, art, and literature appearing out of nowhere during the Renaissance period. Hmm. That doesn't make sense, and you don't just start making music like Beethoven out of nowhere in the 17th century. Same thing for all these Renaissance artists coming why? out of Italy. Not only was history and- Wait, why? Why? But what- but- but why? Why is that- why is that- why does he claim that? Why couldn't music- why couldn't there just be a surge of mu mu musical create creativity? Yeah, and also, wait a minute. Beethoven was in the it was born it wasn't even born until 1770. He was born in 17 fucking 70. Not fucking, not in the 16th century, in the 18th century. This guy is so stupid. And buildings I'm hijack, sorry. Oh my but God. art, culture, and music as well. There is proof to show that many of these old European churches were not actually designed to be churches, and that some of these old world buildings were designed to take in energy from the atmosphere. Where is the proof? Well, there are books on this subject. It's called Atmospheric Electricity. And yes, they were investigating how to harness this energy far before that story that they tell us in school of Benjamin Franklin discovering what? the electrical nature of lightning. Like, they really played us for a joke. He flew a kite with a key on it. 
Guys, this is Freemasonic symbolism. Benjamin Franklin was literally at the highest rank of masonry, and you can even see the compass integrated with this famous painting. These old world buildings had technologies that were capable of extracting electricity from the atmosphere. You can even see these at the top of steeples. This is typical. <laughs> Come on. No. No. How does this, what does this have to do with Tartaria? No. Typically seen to be just a compass, but they're more than just that. There are videos of old temples with this technology still active. These electrical charging centers- Oh my god, so realistic! Oh my god! Videos of old temples oh with this technology god. still active. Holy shit! There's some weird bullshit around this thing in a, in a shaky cam video. This is proof that secretly these towers were meant to harness divine energy to power super weapons. Holy shit! These electrical charging centers were then converted into physical worship centers. Now that might be a little too far too fast, right. so let's slow down a bit and just speak facts. Throughout history, architecture has often been a target during times of war. Buildings would indeed be hijacked and repurposed to serve the needs of the conquering force. From ancient temples turned into churches to palaces converted into military barracks, the theft of oh. architecture has had a huge impact on many societies. Almost all Catholic churches in history were built on old pagan temples. For example, several were supposedly converted into Christian churches during the 5th century AD. Okay. The Parthenon yeah. in Athens. The Temple of Jupiter in Rome. The Temple of Baal in Syria. The Temple of Artemis in Ephesus. And there are many more. But all of these were converted into Christian churches showing how old world buildings were rep I wonder why they were converted into Christian building, into Christian churches. Maybe it was because Christians love taking over shit because Christianity is an imperial religion that believes in converting the entire world to its belief system. Could it possibly be that that's the explanation and not fucking ancient giants or aliens? Purposed for a new agenda. It demonstrates how theft of architecture has been a reoccurring theme throughout history. But not only that, Another aspect is iconoclasm, which is the destruction of religious images and symbols. Iconoclasm is a form of religious violence that has been used throughout history to destroy the past. One example of this is with the Huguenots, who were a group of French Protestants in the 16th and 17th centuries. The Huguenots were known for their iconoclastic tendencies, which led to the destruction of many Catholic churches and religious artifacts. Yeah, and they also got fucking slaughtered, didn't they? During the wars of religion in France, the Huguenots targeted Catholic churches, destroying statues, paintings, and other religious artifacts. This was done in an attempt to cleanse the churches of what they saw as idolatrous symbols and to make them more in line with Protestant beliefs. Okay. Now, let's get really deep for a second. Some of you may be thinking, well, okay, so what happened to these Tartarians or ancient Irish civilizations? What? Obviously, there's no direct source for that question, so we're going to have to do some exploring. The next area we must explain when it comes to Tartaria is Cataclysm. For some reason, this isn't something that gets a lot of attention in history. Conveniently, <laughs> conveniently, all of my evidence was destroyed. You'll just have to trust me, bro. Three class, but the medieval That's writers- That's one of my favorite things. It's literally the part from, uh, it, it, it's so funny where it's like, it's the fucking conspiracy theorists love to do this shit. They love to do the thing where uh, it, it's from the fucking steamed hams where it's like, you're telling me that the that the Aurora Borealis is completely localized inside your kitchen. Yes. Can I see it? No. Unironically, almost every conspiracy theory when push comes to shove boils down to the fucking steamed hams meme. We're constantly talking about cataclysms. And we're not talking about the flood of Atlantis, we're discussing cataclysms of fire and of earth, as described by Plato's Timaeus. Timaeus is Plato's most prized work, where he details the cycle and resets of multiple past civilizations, not just Atlantis. And knowing what we know now, it's possible that the work of Timaeus is actually from the 16th century, and not from 2000 years ago, which would bring an entirely different context to the story. 
All we know is that there have been several recent cataclysms, including several that are associated with comets in America. How do you know that? How do you know that? You say all we know, but how do you know that? We have a few videos discussing this, even evidence to support that the Great Lakes in America were actually created in the 1600s. These cataclysms are important because it shows the civilization has gone through several resets. The most recent one that has had the most impact seems to be the War of 1812, which again not only had one of the largest earthquakes in history, but there was an 1812 comet as well. There's evidence to suggest that there was massive flooding all around the world in recent times, including mud floods. Many buildings and structures around the world that we see in the modern day, and even in downtown areas, seem to be in fact buried buildings, obscured by layers of mud and sediment. The idea of mud flood is that there was a series of floods that swept across the old world burying entire towns and cities throughout Europe and America beneath layers of mud and debris. Okay. Now to most people hearing that for the first time, that might- So hold on, hold on a second. If this is true, it should be insanely easy to verify. If there were mud floods that buried literally thousands and millions of people, if there was entire burgeoning civilizations that were destroyed, all you would need to do is dig down in any major city and you would suddenly find so many skeletons wearing fucking alien fucking armor. I sound ridiculous. But there is evidence to suggest that it may in fact be true. Wow. One strong argument is that in archaeology, there are ancient sites called tells, which is a mound consisting of accumulated debris and natural sediment. They are buried cities. Another argument is we- A buried city existing does not mean that every single city in the entire world is secretly just the tops of ancient great buildings. Jesus fucking Christ. Mentioned is yeah, the that Democrats, many yeah, the Democrats have been covering it up. Buildings, particularly those from the 17th to 19th centuries, have basements that extend far below the ground. These basements are often not visible from the surface, and yet they contain windows and doors that lead to nowhere. Also, let's not forget the countless accounts from ancient texts and legends that describe massive floods and cataclysmic events that swept across the old world. Yeah, because floods and cataclysms happen. Just nobody is buying the idea that the entire earth got covered in fucking mud and erased evidence of, an, of a fucking advanced civilization that conveniently built buildings that look exactly like buildings uh, 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 that, other, that humans built elsewhere. And that actually, no, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't humans taking inspiration from other humans. It was humans taking, uh, literally inhabiting, for some reason, humans just never really build their own buildings. Humans just inhabit the buildings of giants that, for some reason, the upper levels are perfectly human-sized. Even though these structures should have been built for giants, all of the upper floors are very conveniently human-sized. A manuscript called the Book of Miracles describes several cataclysms in detail, but it makes a very interesting point. They claim that these were not natural disasters, but disasters that were the work of a higher power. Oh, which goes yeah, here we go. ...to show that they were consciously created to some degree. Now what you're about to oh hear is controversial, God. but there's always been a fascination with the Ark of the Covenant. These Canaanites had control of a very powerful weapon that is beyond the technology that we have today. The Phoenicians had a weather superpower ability that could summon comets and mud floods and earthquakes, and they used that technology to displace the to displace the Irish, the Atlantean Irish Jewish people. Incredible, In incredible, beautiful. Ah, oh, it's perfect. Nothing, there is nothing made up about any of this, you assholes. It is said to be a weapon of mass destruction, and no, I don't think it has anything to do with aliens. If you ask me, it would seem that we're dealing with some black magic that involves the conscious creation of cataclysm. Don't worry, guys, it's just black magic and not aliens. It's not aliens, it's just black magic. 
that might be a little too far on the deep side of the pool, so I'll come back a bit. But magic does come to play here, and no, we're not talking sorcery and fantasy magic, we're talking about how every royal court had an astrologer and master alchemist. They were not only trying to make predictions, but to force them to manifest their mass rituals. Obviously that's conjecture, but it's important to consider that it may have been possible. Obviously that's conjecture, but trust me, uh, even though I just admitted that this is complete conjecture, they definitely had access to a, a death machine that could wipe out the giant Tartarians. Through ritual or some type of unknown technology to influence the atmosphere or conditions in which produce certain cataclysmic conditions. The New Madrid earthquakes during the 1812 period were the most intense recorded in American history. The extent of its damage is still not really known, yet there are clear indications in the modern day and even in our scarce photographic record. We see photos in the late 1800s of them digging cities out of the mud. Why were all the streets made out of dirt and horse poop when the Romans had paved streets? One thing I know is that if 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 any person uh, in the entire world, if any city has access to paved streets, it means every city must have paved streets. As we know, every single city that was ever a part of the Roman Empire had paved streets. There were no villages with dirt roads anywhere in the world when the Romans were in charge, guys. Why was there no proper waste management in the United States until after the 1900s? Well, it's because they found these cities and had no idea how to operate them. Yeah. They came in and started putting waste and water into a single pipe, which many of which were old water tunnels for drainage. And what happened? Great stinks. Massive cholera epidemics all over the United States, all the way into the late 19th century? doesn't add up how they were building all this grand architecture from civil war forts, otherwise known as star forts, all the way to massive mansions from the Gilded Age. Yet, they had no bathrooms or plumbing systems? This gets into some other deep subjects such as the diet and spiritual capabilities of these prior inhabitants, but much of that information will be too much for most of you new to the subject. These star forts are civil war forts. Have you been to one? One of the most massive one is in Pensacola on a beach. Good luck explaining and? how they went about building that on soft sand in the early 18th. And? And? So we're supposed to take something away from the fact that there is a star fort on a beach? Huh? hundreds but forgetting that they had these all over the east coast and even in san francisco yet the explanation is that they were built during the civil war era to protect america's coast oh yeah wouldn't it be great guys wouldn't it be fucking crazy by the way i've been to one of these star forts i've been to one of the one of the star forts that is literally on this map right here, wouldn't it be absolutely crazy if there was an insane amount of multi-source, multi-varied source, multi source uh, uh, evidence of the, of the massive amount of money that was spent on reinforcing and building new forts in preparation for and during the Civil War era? Wouldn't it be absolutely crazy if there were literally thousands of accounts of people working on these things? Incontrovertible evidence that, wow, yeah, actually during the Civil War, people got pretty panicky and so they spent literally the equivalent of millions of dollars building new forts? Well, it's too crazy for me. It had to be the giants and the gnomes. But this isn't true as many of these forts are actually based on older forts supposedly. And there were massive forts being constructed by the Spanish and French when they first arrived as well. Although the museums like to make you think that they were just building wooden presidios. The entire story of the colonization of America is a fabrication. 
We're told the story that these countries such as Spain, France, and England were all fighting each other in the pursuit of the colonization of America. Yep. Yep, they definitely were. They absolutely definitely were fighting each other in pursuit of the colonization of America. All of these countries were fighting each other for fucking ever and arguably still are. Yeah. Not, who, not over the colonization of America anymore. But who are they working for? Who funded who this project? Who are they working project? for? Themselves, you idiot! What are you talking about? Well, they were all under control of the Holy Roman Church. No, the they weren't! The coat of arms. No! Oh, no! No, they fucking weren't! England was not under the control of the Holy Roman Empire anymore at that point. Oh. Oh, oh. What do you think a coat of arms is? Type in the Triumphal Arch of Maximilian, which is a 16th century woodcut showing you all the Roman-controlled minions. This is one huge royal bloodline operation. And that is the history. Yeah, okay. If you're going to make the argument that the that the Holy Roman Empire was a empire, yeah. But that's not any big re revelation. That's not a conspiracy. That is in and of itself a, a thing to criticize. What is this supposed to prove? This is so fucking incredible. I love how I love how off the rails we've gone. And remember, this is supposed to be a response that's supposed to teach moist critical what it means to believe in Tartaria this video that we have watched right now is supposed to be an introduction for newcomers to Tartaria do you feel like enlightened right now I have an honor I unironically have a headache that we receive these civil war forts or bastions or star forts were already in America and every major European ancient city was once a fortified city. That's the secret of Amsterdam and Paris. They are massive star forts. Is that a secret? Is it a fucking secret that major cities in Europe were heavily fortified? Is that a major, is that a secret? Star forts contain multiple layers, including an underground tunnel system. You can see many of these European star forts on many 16th century maps, showing that they weren't just bastions used for wars, but they were also used for the creation of massive cities. One of the most immediate questions from someone new to the subject is, well, why would they do this? And who are they? Why lie about everything? What's the need to want to cover up history? Well, because these occult societies were in control by royalty and the church. And this church was a hijacked church that belonged to a previous civilization. But not only that, the control of information is necessary in the resetting of a society. This is constantly referenced in Hollywood. Ah, uh, yes. I, we've gotten to my favorite part of unveiled mind or mind unwind or soup mind. We've reached, we've reached my favorite part when he cites fictional books that he read in fucking grade school uh, as, as like proof of his deranged conspiracy theories. Hollywood movies as well, where the elites of a society keep the- Ah yes, equilibrium. What a perfect, this is the second time he's cited equilibrium by the way. This is the second time. Hidden history away from the people for the greater good. That's what we're discussing royal elite bloodlines who funded occult protestant thinkers to create a brand new atlantis as conceived by francis bacon a scientifically ruled society that would exist for eternity and never fall again so why would this be suppressed well if we all knew that we were a reset population and that there were advanced civilizations before us with superior technology that did not charge for energy resources then that would make us much more difficult to control as we mentioned that some of the old world buildings seem to be made with the purpose of extracting energy from the atmosphere. Would it? Would it change anything at all? I, I guess I just don't buy that.
I guess I just don't buy that anybody would be any less easy to control. We already currently have an abundance of energy and resources that are hoarded by a handful of powerful people. I don't think it would change anything. Yeah, the, the amount of hoops he's jumping through to avoid the maybe it's capitalism thing. Well, see, that's the thing. Once again, as I keep saying about conspiracy theorists, there it's a very it's it's an almost nar it's a very narcissistic endeavor uh they have to be the conspiracy theorist has to be the one who d who's discovering the truth that nobody else knows they're the smart one and everybody else is the sheep it can't possibly be that yeah actually our, a lot of the reasons our society sucks is because we built an entire world around capitalism a system that is designed to extract profits uh, no matter the cost, that crushes, that treats people like machines and not like living beings, that has com n no regard for uh, ways of life, that has no regard for people's comfort and happiness, but instead just seeks profit at every measure. Well, that's boring because, see, other people have already figured that one out. Instead, no, it has to be that there's a secret race of giants that built, um, they built castles well, they built castles, but the top floors were sized for humans so that when the mud flood happened, uh, there would be a space for the Irish Jewish Atlanteans to, to transport into once their church had been stolen by the dirty Phoenicians, the Phoenicians who secretly created the fake Roman Empire and also architected the falsehood that is the, the American Civil War. It's really simple if you think about it. Mr. But on top of that, they had dirigibles that could travel and essentially free power, if not cheap, clean energy. This would also transport mass amounts of goods, possibly even for moving buildings. Why do you think there was a cameraman right there ready to capture the destruction of the Hindenburg? It was to erase the old model based on clean energy and to implement a new system of dirty oil energy. That's not the only reason. Like it definitely isn't. Oh. Literally uh, allergic to be to any sort of analysis. No, no, no. It can't possibly be that oil is a filthy but extremely profitable and highly monopolized industry that 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 once it once oil companies were able to to make uh, hoard up so much wealth that they could functionally lobby the government with no restriction no it can't be that that's the case it can't be that it's like corporations that just that 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 managed to completely monopolize and exploit a, a, a a, a very dirty and em environmentally damaging but effective fuel source no it has to be actually that that secretly there was a photographer there to to photograph the hindenburg explosion which the hindenburg was a secret remaining dirigible technology and nobody has ever been able to build it again even though we have even though tons and tons of people have literally flown in blimps it just turns out that blimps aren't actually the best way to transport and that if they're not done correctly they could be dangerous it's so simple you guys it's so fucking simple it's so fucking simple like we said this all started with the corrupted cult of Baal, the religion of the canaanites one of the things that charlie said is that people just like to believe the most unhinged things for no real reason and they don't even gain anything out of it and of course he's right that no he, he's wrong he's wrong about that they do gain something out of it first of all this guy gains a sense of superiority because he knows the truth that they won't tell you but also he makes patreon money people do tend to think conspiracies when it comes to large amounts of power and money but there is a reason for that but that's not the only reason we have come to the conclusions that we've come to. What this comes down to is attempting to understand our realm. But not only that, questioning the status quo that was literally forced down our throats. What do we get out of it? 
How about just understanding our past and just being more curious? I mean, no, dude, yeah. if you wanted to understand your past, you would actually look into history with an honest and and uh, with an honest eye and a drop of humility. If you actually cared, if you were genuinely curious, there is so much amazing shit. But instead, you literally have to erase the actual history of native people. And notice that this motherfucker in every single video, he 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 scoffs at the idea that you're telling me that America was just populated by a bunch of primitive people? Every single video we've watched, she's just been like, I, I can't, I just simply can't believe that there were just these primitive people. He literally is so fucking racist. It's, it's actual racism. It's this idea that no, I can't believe that like there were people here before white people who actually, you know, lived well and maybe lived differently than European people, but they lived well no 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 it actually has to be that there were actually white people here before with advanced technology and uh, a cataclysm from uh sneaky evil Pho phoenicians using weather control technology and space balloons and they actually got rid of it it's so fucking stupid god i i hate this shit it's uh, it always boils back down to having to like uh, it, it boils down to having to fucking cope about being a, 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 a white supremacist in denial, somebody who can't actually learn about history. If you wanted to, if you could put your ego aside for two seconds, uh, you would actually be able to dig into the past and realize that there are incredibly fascinating stories, that there is a very, very complex world. There are conflicting narratives about the, about the past even. It's crazy. Did you know that there actually are real things out there that are totally blow your mind? Mind. Did you know that fucking the actual Catholic Church has engaged in the erasure of people's history? Have you? Can you believe that fucking capitalism has driven people to destroy the histories of other people? Oh, well, it's not aliens and giants, and it wasn't invented by some weird YouTuber looking to make a quick buck, so I guess it doesn't fucking matter, right? So stupid. Reality is far stranger than fiction. Native American people were one of the most dynamic cultures pre-industry. There was so much diversity between Native American cultures uh, uh, that we, we can't even fucking fully grasp it to this day. Partially because a lot of it's been erased intentionally. And by that, I mean because there was a colonial project designed to subjugate people deliberately that is well recorded. You don't have to pretend that uh, about some sort of like uh, conspiracy from the uh, Atlantean Hibernian Jews. And we're taught a boring, dull version of history in the school. There it is. That's it right there. Oh, we're taught a boring and dull version of history. There aren't even any flying blimps and magic electricity and weather weather destruction devices. I, I don't even have the comet summiting lever. System, much of which leads people to not really care about life. He also said... <laughs> much of this leads to people to not really care about life, dude. No, you're depressed and you can't actually find the beauty in the real world. You grew up fucking apparently playing uh, like... Uh, civilization mods where you get a uh, rocket powered balloons and then you were like oh rocket powered balloons don't exist in reality actually they did that, that he didn't think the elite weirdos really cared about religion in a way he's right but he's also ignoring that they are inversionists and occultists the elites care about religion in the way that they like to make a mockery of it and again we're not religious or christians sure there's a lot of satanic hype going on right now, and probably for a good reason, because people are sort of recognizing unsettling patterns within these certain symbols. Isn't that fucking curious? Uh, again, once again, I'm gonna point at the conspiracy chart, okay? I'm gonna point back at the conspiracy chart again. Remember how I said that once you get to a certain point, it's all interchangeable? This guy just said, we're not Christians, and we know that people are obsessed with Satanism. And actually, that's a good thing. Even though we don't believe in Christianity and the, the satanic uh, the satanic panic that's going on right now is uh, completely in contradiction with everything that we've said right now. And the Christians that uh, the Christians that are leading the satanic panic are the people that we say uh, erased history of the Tartarians. Actually, it doesn't really matter because, uh, you know, fuck the Democrats. 
we're taught Absolutely that man incredible. is at his Absolutely pinnacle today incredible. as if we reached our max point in evolution. However, I think it's quite blatant that really isn't the case when you see the level of awareness in the media and our culture today. It's arguably more accurate to say that we have de-evolved as a species, but in a larger context compared to the civilizations of the ancients, a massive amount of knowledge and intelligence has been lost compared to what was once achieved in the past. Don't you think it's strange that we've just lost the ability to build these structures? I mean, compare an old world city to the modern day. It's shocking how much we lost, and... <gasps> this is- I can't believe this video is ending with old building good, new building bad. This random old building is not as cool as this random new building. We don't even know if this is the same building. Are these even the same place? Is this even the same street corner? Just one random old building, one new building. What if this old building just fucking burnt down and this new one is just what they happened to build there instead because people needed a fucking hospital or something? Our new construction methods of modernism are not designed to last. It's not to say that we don't have the technology, but that you would think there would be an evolution from I don't disagree that these buildings are ugly, but that doesn't make the f that doesn't make it true that giants ruled the world. The advanced architectures and early style. At the end of the day, every single conspiracy ends up boiling back down to uh, uh to you should be suspicious about Jewish people and uh, modernism bad and uh, actually Democrats are bad. That's what every single conspiracy ends up boiling down to. In America. But instead, all we get is a bunch of cheap box buildings. If you want to tell Charlie to check this out, that'd be cool. Although I don't really think he's going to watch the whole thing. I mean, I'd be surprised if he did. But I don't even expect this to prove anything. I mean, the building that he showed was destroyed in World War II because it was it was in Germany when it got bombed and they ended up building a new building in its place. Wow! Who could have foreseen that the build that the old building that he's mad about got destroyed for some un unbelievable but probably interesting reason? Again, can this guy talks about how it's about curiosity and wanting to understand history. No, it fucking isn't. It isn't about wanting to understand history. If you wanted to, uh, to understand history, you can actually do that. There are ways to go and learn about the history of a place. And in fact, it's really fucking important. But this fucking free form uh, uh, bullshit that always ends up bringing you right back to fucking white supremacy and fucking anti-Semitism and fucking anti-leftism. It's so fucking fascinating. It's so fucking fascinating how his fucking uh, fan fiction just so happens to align perfectly with the exact same group that he claims is a secret society controlling the world. Turns out, actually, the Christians were okay, even though also the Christians apparently uh, secretly architected the downfall of the, Ac of the Aryans. Jesus motherfucking Christ. We don't claim to have the answers. I just see this as an opportunity to get this information out to more people so that we can continue to ask questions, even questions that might seem dumb or irrelevant. I don't expect Charlie to respond, but if he did, we would just try to learn from it and improve from it. He did say he wanted an explanation on Tartaria, and he specifically mentioned our channel. So it was kind of tough because I understand he has a large audience that probably is never going to take the time to look into some of these things. But at the same time, there is a chance to get this information out to more people and assist others in questioning history, and so I think it's worth it. Regardless, thanks for listening, guys. We got some new big projects coming soon, and in the meantime, all we can hope is that our minds may be unveiled. Let go of everything you think to be true. Relax the mind and ask the question, do I truly understand what this reality is? Have you asked yourself that question, my man? Holy shit. Yeah, the outro is Sissy Hypno, obviously. Yep. It's so obviously fucking Sissy Hypno bullshit.